Now before committing all focus and resources on just making the landing, it's time to secure the cabin and prepare for that landing. As the airplane continues its controlled, circling glide, the pilot must first verify that every item in the emergency memory items checklist has been completed, including the additional three non-memory items. Once these items have been verified, and the pilot is assured that the engine will not restart, he or she can proceed to the UND Cessna 172 Power Off Landing Checklist. The first four items in this checklist are memory items. The rest of the checklist includes non-memory items that should be read and verified from the checklist. These items will only be accomplished if time and altitude permit, and in our current example, time should be on the pilot's side, at least enough so that all items on the checklist can be accomplished. Once this checklist has been completed, the pilot can be assured that the airplane has been configured properly for the imminent emergency landing. The pilot will then continue the glide with positive airplane control down to the point of intended landing. As the 172 passes the abeam point at approximately 1,000 feet AGL, the pilot can commence a power off 180 degree approach and landing. Flaps should be extended when the pilot is assured the point will be made. If encountering a stronger than expected headwind on final, the pilot can delay flap extension until he or she feels it is necessary. Remember, flaps are beneficial because they will allow the airplane to touch down on the terrain at the slowest airspeed and ground speed possible. However, flaps can also be a detriment in this situation because their extension will always yield a shorter gliding distance and may cause the pilot to end up short of the point or in a position that he or she is attempting to stretch the glide with insufficient airspeed. The pilot must always maintain a safe approach airspeed and avoid any stall spin situation. Remember, it is better to land on less desirable terrain under controlled flight than on any terrain during uncontrolled flight. Next, the pilot will continue the approach and touch down at a slow but controlled airspeed in a nose high attitude and as close to the intended touchdown point as possible. Depending on the terrain, the touchdown and rollout may be smooth and uneventful, or it may be violent and damage the aircraft. In either case, the pilot should ensure that all passengers are evacuated immediately and instructed to remain near the aircraft until emergency services arrive. During the winter, the upper Midwest region of the United States, and North Dakota in particular, will present some of the harshest and most extreme temperatures in North America. For this reason, it cannot be stressed enough that pilots should always be carrying cold weather survival equipment and must undergo some form of cold weather training. In the case of an engine failure during the winter, the pilot must activate his or her emergency locator transmitter as soon as possible. Under most circumstances, the pilot and passengers have the best chance of surviving if they remain with the airplane and its available shelter. In the end, it is up to the judgment of the pilot in command when making a decision to stay with the airplane or perhaps walk to a nearby populated area. 4,000 feet AGL, level, cruise flight. Your engine has failed. Proceeding step by step, we will simulate this emergency in real time based on the Cessna 172's best glide airspeed rate of descent. Take a breath fly the airplane, and then work the problem. As airspeed reduces to best glide, run the memory items on the Cessna's engine failure flight checklist. Airspeed, 68 knots. Fuel selector valve, both. Fuel shutoff valve, on. Mixture, rich. Fuel pump, on. Magneto switch, both. Now the checklist is completed, the engine won't start, Airspeed has now settled to best glide, and we are still at our original engine failure altitude. So we have some time. Immediately decide on a general touchdown area. Over there looks good. It seems as though there are minimal obstacles and favorable terrain. Let's start heading in that direction. As the glide continues, we notice a small farm road with no power lines, small ditches, and no trees in the approach or landing paths. Let's plan to land into the wind on the road about 200 feet past the intersection. 
As we get directly above our intended landing spot, we can check that our glide airspeed is maintaining and proceed with pulling out our checklist and verifying the engine failure flight portion. Don't forget, this verification will also include the three non-memory items. Engine instruments, check. Magnetos, check. Fuel pump, off. As this checklist is completed, the memory items on the power off landing checklist will be initiated. Airspeed, 68 knots. Place to land, pilot option. Seat backs, most upright position. Seats and seat belts, secure. Since time and altitude permit, we can initiate the non-memory portion of this checklist. Transponder, 7700. Radio, transmit. ELT, on. Throttle, idle. Mixture, idle cutoff. Fuel shutoff valve, off. Magnetos, off. Flaps, as required. Alternator and battery master switches, off. Standby battery switch, off. Doors, unlatch. Approach speed, 65 knots. As we finish that checklist, we are well into our second gliding turn and are attempting to make our beam point about 1,000 feet above the terrain, which, based on our trusty sectional chart, is about 1,400 feet MSL. Adding 1,000 feet, we'll plan to be at 2,400 feet on our altimeter at the abeam point. Now the aircraft is secured, we have notified ATC of our emergency, and they are sending emergency services to our location aided by the guidance of our emergency locator transmitter. We have a plan for landing, and we still have some time to spare. Fast forward to the abeam point. We know we are approximately 1,000 feet above the ground, and we can guess the wind strength by observing the rate of our movement over the ground and plan accordingly for the power off 180 degree approach. We decide to turn on to final. Flaps will be extended slowly to their full extent since we are confident that the touchdown point just past the intersection can be reached. The rest of the approach will be normal flown at 65 knots, and we will initiate a normal flare and touchdown at the slowest airspeed possible. From the point of engine failure to the successful and safe touchdown, we had just over five minutes, and we used every second to our advantage. <laughs>